you're probably going to 38,000. And then if that breaks, then we have to start talking about potentially 30,000. That might sound ludicrous, Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway, the master trader and analyst, is worried about the potential banking crisis as he also analyzes the major stocks, their earnings, Bitcoin technical analysis, and key price targets, and much more in this fast-paced video. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Amid the Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund ETF mania, wild price predictions have flown around. Even if the Securities and Exchange Commission approves the ETFs, many anticipate a sell-the-news event that will drive Bitcoin's BTC $44,029 price 30% below current levels. However, I don't see this scenario playing out. In fact, there's a convincing argument to predict Bitcoin will rally another 10% from current levels above the $50,000 mark before pulling back slightly in the short term. We are looking at the PPI data. Now, yesterday, the CPI data came in hotter than expected. However, we're seeing a reversal on the producer side. In other words, forecast was for a 0.2% increase in producer prices or PPI core and we saw zero. There was no increase in producer price on the core side. And again, core is uh, excluding food and energy, right? So on the regular PPI, which is in including food and energy, we were expecting a 0.1% increase. Look at this, guys. Negative 0.1%. Negative. Meaning prices on the producer side overall did downtick just a little bit. Again, is this deflation? I don't buy that, and I'm going to tell you why. So the question is, on the producer side, sure, maybe deflation. Will they pass it along to the consumer? My guess, and from history, we know that once they raise prices, once prices of goods are raised, they do not want to lower those. And also, remember, I just heard Elon Musk was raising salaries for some of his Tesla employees. We're still seeing wages going sideways to higher on a continual basis. So again, I would love to tell you guys that deflation, and listen, deflation on an economic basis is usually a scary thing. I love deflation. Like if you're gonna let me buy gas for less than it was a year ago, I'm all for that, I think we all are. But obviously implications on what does it mean inside the economy are a different story. Okay, so here we are with our PPI data today broken down. Again, we're seeing the market reverse the moves from yesterday. So remember that the market was generally lower yesterday because rates, interest rates, as well as the dollar went higher. Well, if we take a look at what's going on today, let's do that right now. Let's jump right in. This is the 10-year yield. Let's go right to that. The 10-year yield on the back of this news, again, remember yesterday. In fact, let me show yesterday here. Let's zoom out. Okay. So to look at this, and by the way, this shows you that again, you know, it's, it's questionable what really was taken into impact yesterday. But on that CPI data that was hotter than expected, higher inflation than, than expected, look, we saw the move up in rates. We went as high as about 4.07% on the 10 year. All right, then the markets were like, nah, we don't buy it. We're jovial. We think everything's fine. The Fed's going to cut rates. And the markets kind of came back down on the yields and we kind of settled in. We were upticking again going into the CPI data or the PPI data, excuse me. But then look at that right back down because, again, no inflation on the producer prices. And again, what does the market do? What do we know about the market? When yields come down, markets begin to move higher. So initially pre-market, we were actually down pretty sharply on the S&P, the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ futures, in fact, were down about 100 points, which is a decent drop. But Again, as soon as this news came out, the NASDAQ began to rebound, the S&P was rebounding, and everything seems hunky-dory going into the weekend. All right, this is the S&P 500, the Spiders pre-market. This is where we closed yesterday right here. 
You can see yesterday after hours, we were down ticking. This morning, we kind of jumped up a little bit, then we fell down. Then we actually had a pretty big dip as initially when JP Morgan earnings came out, the stock dumped, although it is last I checked higher on the day. We also saw other earnings come out from banks. They were, again, mediocre at best and the initial market reaction was down. However, JP Morgan turned around, we were chopping up here, then right here is where that PPI data came out, and the markets again are basically trading now neutral to higher on the day. So again, just walking you through all the pre-market from yesterday after hours, all the way into this morning, and again, we're going into the open in about 25 minutes. All right couple other charts here. NASDAQ 100, you can see the same thing going on. NASDAQ 100 again, yesterday closing right here. We drifted lower, we fell down. We saw Nvidia down early today, pre-market down five plus dollars. Some other things going on. But as we inched in and as the markets began to rebound a little on those banks reversing some of their moves, and then the PPI data right there, and take a look. And here we are, we are now basically flat to positive on the NASDAQ 100 as well. Jamie Dimon, CEO of, of J.P. Morgan, did make some statements today that caught my eye. He talked about the consumer being somewhat resilient, you know, the normal spiel about, you know, things are okay. He said that fiscal, basically he said that the Federal Reserve raising rates, which has been restricting capital, has been offset by government spending, which I think is very accurate, meaning that you know, the Fed has done a lot to essentially pull money back, raising rates. It makes loans harder to come by. They're more expensive, so people don't take it. it. means less money in the system. But our government has gone out of its way to continue to spend, which essentially has made up for the, the subtraction of what the Fed has done. And it has kept the economy from really sliding into a recession. So even myself, late last, early last year, I said, all right, by late 2023, I thought we would be in a recession. Ultimately, that didn't happen, and we're still not in a recession just yet. And I think what you have to realize is that, again, with the government spending the way it is, hiring, I mean, look at the hiring data for the US government. Look at the deficits. I mean, it's literally adding a trillion dollars every few months in, in additional debt. That is offsetting, and that is continuing to act as stimulus to the economy. Essentially, you went from, and I've used this analogy before, the Federal Reserve was the drug dealer for the markets, right? We wanted free money, we couldn't get enough of it, give us more and more and more. Um, they took that drug away by raising rates. All right, so we lost that drug. The markets, if we didn't have the government to step in and become the new drug dealer for us, the markets would have had a panic attack. But because the government is spending in its stead, essentially feeding that drug, that, that money to the environment, to the economy, to the markets, that has now taken the place of the Federal Reserve. Which, by the way, now it starts making me think, number one, I do think inflation will start to uptick at one point, and Jamie Dimon actually agreed with that. He said that, don't be surprised if inflation begins to uptick a little bit from here. But I also think that at some point when the government, like if inflation upticks, the Fed's not gonna be able to cut, at some point the government will be forced to stop spending the way they are. And that is probably when we could face that 100 year cycle, that Great Depression, that big collapse, whether it's five years from now, whether it's three years from now, I don't know. All right, Bitcoin guys, Bitcoin was a sell the news event essentially, right? So, um, you know, basically what we saw on, on yesterday's action is that initially on the approval the day before, there was very little movement. But as we got closer to the stock market opening, uh, people got very excited the ETFs were gonna be into trade. And it seems like that, once they started trading, you saw this pop on Bitcoin, and then it topped out and reversed. Couple things to note here. Number one, we did hit this longer term trend line on Bitcoin, right? So again, if we look at this, we can see very clearly this 2019 high through the lows of the bull market, and that's the high pivot now on the market. It was also a classic perfect 618 Fibonacci retrace. So again, multiple levels, and by the way, you can go back a month ago. I was talking about, listen, Bitcoin probably traced to 48 to 50,000 before a pullback. Yesterday, based on that reversal, and this is important for us as technicians, right? Let me remove these lines. Yesterday, Bitcoin did put in a daily topping tail. Okay, now daily topping tails, they don't give you absolutes, right? It doesn't guarantee that Bitcoin's gonna go down. It's, it changes the odds. It tells us, okay, 
We now have this candle, which is a topping tail. We now can say that there is a higher probability than not, maybe 60-40, that Bitcoin is short-term put in a high and it may trade back down. Where would Bitcoin have first technical support? I'm going to show you guys right now on the chart. Let me just zoom in a little bit. We're going to take this line and drag it right up here. And this is kind of my zone right now. So again, look for Bitcoin. Bitcoin can trade down to about, let's see, what price is this here? Uh, 43,000, right in that vicinity. And as long as it holds this longer term trend line, I think it's fine, no big deal. But if it breaks that 42.8 and trades below, you're probably going to 38,000. And then if that breaks, then we have to start talking about potentially 30,000. That might sound ludicrous, but again, I'm a technician. Unless, it, unless 38 breaks, doesn't you know 30,000 really is irrelevant. If that breaks, then we start looking at the charts and gathering the data. Uh, gold today, big move on gold, guys. Gold is starting to pop to the upside. I think this is game time on gold. I think this next move up is going to blow right through this level on gold and move us well into the 2100 range and above. So again, nice gain today, 2056. The key is going to be a daily close above 2075 and a confirming move the next day. And then it should be off to the races. People are very underinvested in gold right now. Very, very underinvested. While the central banks have been accumulating trillions of dollars in gold. So just keep that in mind is that there's an underinvestment. They will chase. Once the breakout comes and once you see the headlines hit, people will start to chase this gold trade. I do think, again, by the end of this year, we could be talking $2,500 in gold. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's make this journey to financial empowerment unforgettable.